This first segment of footage begins with either the Muroc end of an X-1E ferry flight from the Bell factory in New York, or perhaps even an aborted mission. The final member of the X-1 family to fly was the X-1E. It was conceived as a stopgap measure after the X-1D and the third first generation X-1 were lost to Ulmer gasket explosions. There was a very real concern that the loss of these aircraft coupled with the fact that the first supersonic 6062 X-1 had already been retired and placed on museum duty, that it would be impossible to complete the overall test program. On top of that, the nitrogen spheres on board the 6063 X-1 were cracking, making them unsafe. Essentially, the NACA was looking at a situation where they might conceivably have no flyable X-1 aircraft. So a decision was made to significantly reconfigure the 6063 aircraft. The biggest changes would be the installation of a turbo pump propellant delivery system, replacing the nitrogen spheres for fuel delivery, and the wing would be replaced with a much thinner airfoil. Also, an upgraded rocket motor would be installed, the Reaction Motors LR8 system, very similar to that being used concurrently on the Douglas D558-2 Skyrocket research aircraft. An extensive network of pressure sensors and strain gauges were located throughout the wing structure, along with more advanced telemetry gear. The cockpit was also modified with the pilot moving from the original low-slung seating position buried in the cockpit to a higher position with much, much better visibility. We can assume that the pilots also welcomed the long-overdue arrival of an ejection seat for safety. Yaw strakes were added to the underside of the tail for later flights in the X-1E series, adding a touch more directional stability to help prevent the onset of inertia coupling. Joe Walker piloted the first X-1E flight on December 15, 1955. Walker ended up piloting 21 of the 26 flights completed by the E-model, and it was only grounded when unrepairable cracks were discovered in the propellant tanks. The last E-model flight and the last flight by any X-1 took place on November 6, 1958. At this point, the North American X-15 was less than a year from first flight. The X-1E is displayed today on a pylon outside the administration building at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center located at Edwards Air Force Base. If you're of a certain age, you might recall this X-1E showing up in establishing shots in episodes of the I Dream of Genie TV show. Note that this is the same B-29 used for the majority of the X-1 program, but that it's been repainted into a different paint scheme. 